I want you to draw your work and design it before you build it. So I want to show you that you don't have to draw it on your computer in AutoCAD. You don't have to have a drafting table. You can draw right on the right on a piece of plywood with your framing square, or you can tape a piece of paper onto your plywood. And I'm just going to draw a simple volute very quickly on this paper, give you an idea how with just your square, with the compass, and with trammel points, you can draw pretty much anything that has curves or straight lines. So the first thing I'm going to do is quickly draw a basic plan of the bottom of this stair. That line there will be the skirt board. This line here will be the bottom riser. And we have a 10 inch rise, 10 inch run I mean, which is a pretty standard run. And then I'm going to draw the center line of my handrail on this. I know we're going to use inch and three quarter balusters and my first baluster is going to sit right here on this tread inch and three quarters square and I want the side of my baluster to line up with my skirt board and the other side of the baluster I want that to line up with the face of the riser so there's my baluster and the center line of an inch and three quarter baluster is going to be seven eighths in so that will be the center line of my stair right there. And I'm going to draw the center line on the stair. Center line of the handrail, that is. We're going to use a two and three quarter inch wide handrail. So I'll make a line. Take this off the fifth scale and go back to the regular scale. I'll make a line that's one and three eighths on one side and one and three eighths on the other side. And this is a plan view of the handrail. Like that. Now, I think I'm going to start the curve of my volute about two inches in front of my riser. So I'm going to go out another two inches. And that's where I'll start the first radius line for my volute. The first radius line will be right there. Now, I know that my uh, volute wants to be about 11 inches wide. We're going to have about an 11 inch wide tread here. And so I'll measure 11 inches to the other side of the volute. And I think I'll put a shrink back, pretty good common shrink back for a volute is about one inch. So 11 minus one is 10 inches. So my second radius will be five inches and my first radius will be six inches. So I can draw six inches out here and find the center point of my first radius. And each radius goes through 90 degrees, so I'll draw a stop line for it here, too. Let's see if my dividers open wide enough to do six inch radius. I think they do. I won't have to use my tremble points. So that's the first radius for the volute. And I'll draw the other side of the rail and I'll put a line down the center line of the rail too. That's the outside of the rail. And that's the center line of the rail. Now I'm going to shrink all the radiuses by one inch. So what I have to do is draw a line that's one inch in here. and I'll square it off and I can draw my next radius or I guess you'd say my next series of ra radii I think that's a plural of radius this is the same same pair of dividers I use for scribing. And here's the center line of the rail there. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to shrink it in one more inch 
for my third radius. A spiral, this, a volute's a spiral, and a spiral is a curve that shrinks or expands as it goes around. So we're shrinking one inch each time. There are a lot of different kinds of spirals. I know this is my next radius, and I'm only going to do the outside of the rail here. You'll see why in a moment. I'll put the center line on, too. Now I've got all the lines I need, and I can actually just continue to use these lines to shrink back. I'm going to remove the excess part of this line so it doesn't confuse us. And I'll shrink back for the fourth radius one more inch. Now, I want this shape here to taper and get smaller. I don't want to draw a line that's parallel to this line, which is what would happen if I shrank this next time by one inch. These lines here would be parallel, and I don't want that. I want it to actually get smaller. So the way I do that is I'm going to divide this one inch in by a half, and this time I'm only going to shrink one half. And my next radius, actually I've got the wrong spot, I'll go right here, half here. And I have to draw another stop line. And this next radius will only shrink one half of an inch. And as you see, that will make it taper. This gets narrower as we go around. If I'd gone to this point here, this would not have gotten narrow, it would have just been parallel because I'd be doing this using this center, which is the same center I used for this curve. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to shrink back another half. And what this does, this will be my last curve, and it'll bring me to the center of my square. And the square is really, the center of the square is really the focus of the ellipse, kind of the eye of the, not the ellipse, the, the focus of the spiral. It's the eye of the spiral. Let me just make my last radius here. And that brings the volute down to a nice scroll ending, just like that. Let me go back over this and show you exactly what I did. I actually drew a spiral by using six different centers. And this is my first center right here, C1. And this, using this center, I drew radius one. And radius one was six inches. That's the, to the outside of the rail. And then I went to another radius. I drew that for 90 degrees to here. I picked another center, which is one inch shorter. So that would be center two. And from that center, I drew radius two. That's radius two, which is five inches. And then I moved in another inch for my next 90 degrees to center three. And here, I drew a radius that's four inches, right around like that. And then for center number four, I drew my final radius that closes the ellipse back around to itself, and that would be three inches. Then I had to make the sp space between the volute and the rail begin to taper. So instead of shrinking the radius by one inch, by one inch here, I only shrunk it a half inch. And I went to this center here, which is C5. And on that one, I drew this radius. And I had to draw a line down from C5 here, because that radius wants to go a full 90 degrees also. And then for my very last radius, I went another half inch. And that takes me right to the center of the square, C6 here. This is the eye of the spiral. This is where the kind of vortex that the whole thing spirals down into. And using that center, I drew my last radius until I've closed the volute off into a scroll. And this point right here will be where I drill a hole on the underside of the volute. 
And I'm going to draw another circle here because this circle will represent the volute newel. Right, right there. Let me readjust this. Right there on center six is your newel post. And now we have the volute completely created in two dimensions. And let me show you what it's going to look like in three dimensions. <clears throat> 